Hey, what's going on, fellas? Got to do a thermodynamic analysis on the banjo burner today. And what we're looking at here is 10 gallons of water boiling away in a trash can with the banjo burner positioned underneath it. This is a liquid propane burner and it has a vaporizer coil positioned on the bottom of it that vaporizes liquid propane from the bottle that enables us to run at enormous power outputs without having to worry about losing bottle pressure. So let's check this out. Just a quick look at the burner before I cover it up. The vaporizer coil under there. That's the gas input. So, how much gas we actually burn in this tiny little space? All I'm doing here is turning the blower off, guys. The gas valve's remaining the same to enable us to exhibit the actual amount of gas being combusted in this small area. So that is how we're enabled to pack an enormous amount of power in such a small space. Space, I'm sorry, because we're supercharging. So here I am, right about seven minutes in, and this thing's already at a rolling boil. Okay, we're seven minutes in, and it's boiling like crazy. So it's like 100 degrees outside, guys, so there's not much steam coming out of that bucket, but uh, look at that vaporizer coil shining. It's completely dried off today. There ain't no ice forming on that thing. Last night I had the whole thing looking like a candy cane. You can tell by the color of that metal we're hitting 400 degrees on the intake of the burner. All right, fellas, we're coming up on a half hour. All right, so there it is, half hour in, everything held together. We we're melting some serious ice. The vaporizer coil is perfect. Don't need to change a thing. In fact, it's a little too long. The color of that line indicates we were hitting temperatures of 400 degrees and we were pretty much melting everything. So we about broke down in the middle of the test, but I managed to get a fan out to keep things cool enough to run us for the rest of the test. Let's check this out. Okay, so just for the purpose of a visual aid, this is how deep the can was. And this is how much water was left in it afterwards. So, we boiled this much water. These two buckets are the 5.24 gallons that... Um, boiled in a half hour period. I have highlighted some of the more important attributes that I will use in further design of machines. And that is, how many gallons per minute do you boil? That's 859 milliliters a minute. What's the efficiency of a setup that's that inefficient? How much does it cost to do it? Things like that. Now to make a, a, a diagram like this, it takes like several pages of uh, homework. So yeah, all that mess right there, which is very unreadable, was turned into this nice little graph right here. Just thought I'd share this part of the process with you guys. You guys never see me toiling with calculators and numbers, but... So what the heck did we just see on a thermodynamic level, essentially? We ran the system for 30 minutes, okay? And in that time, we boiled, or we burnt 14 pounds of propane, giving us 301,000 BTUs of energy, and it cost us $12.88. We started off with 10 gallons, ended up with 3.5 gallons, or 3.8 gallons, meaning that we boiled 5.24 gallons of water. The phase change energy needed to take 212 degree water to 212 degree steam was 42,389,000 BTUs. It took seven minutes to reach that point. There was a temperature change of 133 degrees 
and that required 11,092 BTUs to heat up 10 gallons of water from 79 Fahrenheit to 212 in seven minutes. The efficiency of the system was these two values added together, divided by the power input, multiplied by 100, giving us 17.7% efficiency. And that's about the brass tax. So, like how many BTUs do you need to actually do the job? Like if we did the thermodynamics on this and didn't take into account the 17.7% inefficiency, we would have been way off on the actual power, which was right around 53 thousand BTUs and as you can see it actually took us 603,000 BTUs to pull that off in a half hour with the system that inefficient so pretty cool little chart all right Bobo so this is where we're at we're shooting for 200 horsepower okay it's a well-known fact that um, it takes about 1200 BTUs to give you one pound of steam at 500 PSI, okay? Like a steam figure for guys who run, you know, steam equipment, things like that. And if we look at these figures, we come out with about a 3,200 some horsepower burner set up. So, if we do the math on that, we've got 8 million BTUs needed to give us the 200 horsepower divided by how many BTUs each burner gives us at a maximum, we need 9.3 burners. A bigger blower could bring that down to nine. Now, if we use the assumption that every brake horsepower requires 33,475 BTUs, we multiply that by 200, and that gives us a figure of about six million BTUs. We divide that by the power of the burners, and we come up again with a very close figure of eight burners which is real close to what this guy is saying about this this right here is right out of a a chemistry thermodynamics book so we know that's legit so this this gentleman here is, is on to something and i like the fact that it includes the pressure you can get because we're going to want to be above 500 psi's uh, we're probably going to want to stay in the 800 to a thousand psi's to pull this off but I just wanted to show you like the efficiency factor because if that uh, boiler is not 100% efficient and it won't be, we will actually need more of these burners to do this. It may not take 200 horsepower to do what we're gonna do, but uh, some people in the know are saying it takes a minimum of 200 horsepower to pull that off. 